Okay, so welcome to all of our followers on Facebook, the Agostinos Trattoria. This is Chef Dan. We are here today to uh, do a master class on chicken cacciatore. Uh, in, in attendance today, we also have the Porsche Club of America, Las Vegas region. Say hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today uh, for the master class and for a nice uh, early supper. Um, Pleasure to have you all here. I understand we have some aspiring chefs in our attendance today. Can you raise your hands, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're shy over here. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I thought everyone. you said first firing. Oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, just a little history about uh, chicken cacciatore. Uh, cacciatore in Italian means hunter. Um, so, this is kind of a poor man's dish or a peasant's dish um, and dates back to probably originated in the 18th century around the Renaissance era. Um, and some of the history says that this wasn't uh, just a poor man's dish, but also uh, was done for nobility, uh, for you know parties, big events, banquets, things like that as well. So um, we wanna talk a little bit about the ingredients today. And before I go over those ingredients, I wanna introduce you to a very helpful book to those of us who work in this industry. Um, Food Lover's Companion. This is kind of our Bible. Um, has virtually everything you could possibly imagine food related. Uh, it's a great resource and if you pick up one of these uh, on Amazon or at the bookstore or wherever, um, you can find some of the terms that I'll be using today in here described uh, in detail. And it's just a great resource for uh, people that like to cook. So I'm gonna set that down. And we're going to talk a little bit about the ingredients. Um, so I'm going to be using for our lunch today a skin-on, bone-in chicken thigh. Um, typically, this this dish uh, is is done with dark meat. Um, however, you can do a combination of the dark meat and the white meat if you like. Um, I have here some bone-in skin-on thighs. Okay. And I also have, you can also do this with the whole half chicken if you like. Um, this backbone has been removed by myself. And, but so you can see the rib cage is still attached and the breastbone, um, the bones, the thigh, and the leg bone are still intact. The uh, method we are using today is called a braise. A braise is a cooking method which meats and or proteins or vegetables are browned in fat first, then tightly covered, and in a small amount of liquid, cooked with low heat over a long period of time, um, rendering uh, all your ingredients uh, in this process helps to uh, tenderize the meat um, and then incorporates some of the uh, natural ingredients from the proteins and the vegetables and everything um, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute so this is a braised combination of dry and moist cooking we'll be using the dry cooking method first which will be searing the proteins in fat and then we'll move on into the braised uh, portion of the recipe uh, the benefit of the braised like i said tender moist juicy uh, the ultimate goal is for the for the meat to just kind of fall off the bone as you um, as you bite into it and uh, just kind of melt in your mouth. Um, we're gonna, using a preset oven, uh, preset to 375 degrees. Um, also make note that some of your appliances at home may differ, uh, so you may have to make some minor adjustments in the cooking time or the temperature or uh, how much liquid is incorporated into the recipe as you move along. Um, and we're gonna be uh, talking about the flavor transfer, what we call a flavor transfer. So I'm gonna turn my stove on, and I'm gonna talk about this piece of equipment here. This is called a sauteuse. Sauteuse. Uh, I like this particular pan for doing dishes like this uh, because, and it's another reason why I chose this recipe to share with you today, uh, it's kind of one of those one-pot meals. 
uh, which is always nice if you're in a hurry. Uh, you don't want to do a bunch of dishes. And this will easily uh, allow me to do all the steps of the recipe in one pot, cover it, put it in the oven and finish, and I can serve right out of it too when it's done. So I'm going to first season generously both sides, salt and kosher salt and black pepper. My pan is getting nice and hot while I'm doing this. And for this recipe, I'm going to dredge it in flour just lightly. I did not do this for the entire meal today because I didn't want people to have a problem if they uh, are sensitive to gluten or they're trying to avoid gluten. And I wanted to make sure everybody could enjoy it without substitution. So it's dry? Correction. What's that? The pan dry? It is dry at this point, yes. The reason I'm going to do uh, the flour today for the demonstration is because I want to explain uh, a process along the way that we use a lot in the kitchen, which is called making a roux. So I'm adding my olive oil now. And you see how there's wisps of smoke coming from the pan? That's what we want. If your pan isn't hot enough, you're not going to be able to get the colorization, the browning of the proteins. Could hear that sound. So when the flour on the chicken combines with the fat in the pan, in this case uh, we're using extra virgin olive oil. Yes, we have a question. Not necessary. Um, we don't do it. Not necessary. Okay. So, what I was talking about was the process of when flour is introduced to fat uh, during the cooking process, um, you can create what's called a roux. A roux is something that we like to use to help bring our sauces together and get good consistency. So doing it this way will help us get the sauce to the consistency that we want. Now I didn't, like I said, I didn't use the flour today, but it's going to be fine anyway. So this part in your recipe, it says it's optional. You can do it if you like or not. So we're kind of uh, getting some browning. I put this in skin side first. I want the skin to get a little crispy. At this point, you, if you're at home, you might want to turn on your exhaust fan or your smoke alarm is probably going <laughs> to Maybe open some windows too. All right, so I'm going to take this chicken, I'm going to set it aside for a moment. And I'm going to add my vegetables. We're going to be julienne on the vegetables. So I have the, I turned my stove off for a minute. I have the green bell pepper. Now this is gonna be half a recipe. Just for the demonstration part. Whole onion, just a little one. We're gonna take the top and bottom root side off. Cut it in half. Take off these seal on the outside and just cut just like that. Okay, we're going to add our mushrooms. I like to use these baby portobellos. I love these. and bottom off the red and then I'm going to quarter it 
take this membrane off. Just pull apart. Cut straight across. So our veggies are in, our red bell, our green bell, our onions, and our mushrooms. The flame can go back on. I have, I still have the oil in here, the uh, extra virgin olive oil, I still have the fat, I don't need to add any. Minced garlic, I believe it's about one tablespoon. Never enough. Go on right there. And we're gonna let this, now we're sauteing. Sauteing high heat, low fat in the pan. Sauteing, we're gonna wait a few minutes and we wanna smell that garlic. We wanna get that aroma. Can you guys smell anything back there? Not enough garlic. I can smell it. White wine, half a cup. So what we're doing now is called deglazing. When we were searing the chicken, it left a nice gift behind. It's called fawn. Fawn is the result of the browning of the amino acids when introduced to fat, or what is referred to as the Maillard reaction. Uh, we want to capture that flavor, that's great flavor. So we use wine to deglaze the pan, to capture that fawn, and then we're going to add some chicken stock, one cup. Why not water? Thank you. Another thing happens um, as far as transfer of flavor. Um, you're going to get some of the fat released from the skin on the chicken. It's going to mix with the extra virgin olive oil as well and that's going to give you some flavor. The chicken stock's going to give you flavor. The wine is, is a nice, uh, has a nice acidic quality um, that helps to break down the soft tissues and the connective tissues and protein. Pomodoro, basic tomato sauce, 12 ounces, going right in. Capers, does anyone know what a caper is? There's a gentleman in the back. It is the unopened bud of a flower found in the Mediterranean, mostly. All right, so we have our sauce going now. We're going to put our chicken back in. For this and this would go in the oven at 375 for about 45 minutes easy peasy so flavor transfer in the bones of the chicken marrow and collagen collagen is like natural gelatin it's in it's in our joints um, and it helps to uh, it kind of gelatinizes while it's cooking and it helps to bring the sauce together as well. Yes, question? Oh, did I do that? I do 375. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for. Thank you for, for catching that. My fault. 375, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and you wanna, you wanna have, it should be a pretty nice boil um, before it goes into the oven. And then it's just, the oven, the, the uh, temperature is just kinda keep, kinda keep it there. So flavor transfer, we're gonna be getting marrow and collagen from the bones. We're going to be getting some nice fat and flavor from the skin. Obviously, you know, the dark meat 
we love turkey in, in this particular recipe. Um, if you want to do the half chicken, I would just I would separate the leg and thigh, and then I would cut this breast in half so that it doesn't because it's going to take a lot longer than the smaller pieces to cook. So if you cut it in half, then it's going to cook in the same amount of time as the smaller pieces. Uh, you could also use the leg quarters if you wanted. Um, all of that stuff. The leg quarter is the leg and thigh portion separated from the breast, so you could use those if you want to. Some options. And is anyone familiar with the term called confit? <laughs> 